Hi and welcome to this video where I'm going to be changing the oil and filter on the Mini R50. Now changing the oil is obviously one of the cheapest ways of maintaining your engine and giving it a long life because obviously the oil gets contaminated and diluted over time. Now BMW would recommend that you use their long life 04 oil which ironically was made for the diesel engines with the particulate filter but they also recommend it for their spark ignition engines such as the Mini. But that's only within Europe. So they don't advise that oil outside Europe, only within Europe. I will be using this oil, which is SAE 5W30 to C3 spec. Now, just out of interest, the W stands for winter, which means the viscosity of this oil at, in winter is five. And under normal operating temperatures, it would be 30. So we need four and a half liters of that. And I'll also be using just a standard aftermarket filter. This is all I could get at the time. And such as this one. And you also get a new seal to go on the aluminium housing. So I'll be using that. To remove the filter housing, I'll be using the FACOM set like this. And I'll need the 36 millimeter one. Now I'll also need a 13 millimeter socket to remove the sump plug to drain the oil and we also need to replace the seal on that sump plug. Then we obviously need a torque wrench to torque the filter housing and the sump plug back up to 25 newton meters. Obviously some gloves are a good idea because you don't really want to touch contaminated oil and obviously some form of catch pan to get the oil into. So that's what this video will be about and hopefully you'll enjoy it and thank you for watching. So the only problem with cold oil is it's very difficult to flow. So it's probably a good idea just take the car for a quick spin, try and get that oil up to some temperature and that way when we take the drain plug out hopefully it will flow out nice and quickly and bring all the contaminants with it. So with the engine oil nice and warm we can now open the bonnets. So what I'm going to do here is just use some low profile ramps just to raise the Mini slightly off the ground and give me better access for a trolley jack. So the cable release is just there in the footwell of the driver's side and then there's a little catch there on the right, push that up and there it is. So these are the things that will concern us today which is the oil filter location, the oil filler cap and the engine oil level dipstick. Now if we take a quick close look at the canister which the filter sits in, this is the part we're going to be removing from the back of the engine. And here's the sump plug that we'll also be removing to drain the oil. OK then, jacking the Mini up for better access. So I'm going to jack the Mini up mainly because I need to remove the driver's wheel um, to get the camera in there while I do the oil filter change. So you probably don't need to jack the car up this high um, because access can be reached from the front using your hand. But anyway, so there's the jacking points on each side where, the, where you'd put your axle stands. If I can just drop it down there. I'll show a quick close-up of the actual jacking point that you're supposed to use with its rubber mount, which is that there. Okay then. So now to remove the oil filter. So I'll just show you where the filter is located there at the back of the engine. And here we can see it through the wheel arch. And there's another view of it. And there's a close up of the cap that we need to undo. So what I'll be using is the Facom um, oil filter cap set. And I need the 36 millimeter one which is this one. Now these are special low profile because obviously as we undo it the access is going to get tighter so you do want a low profile one to remove it. Now I'm just going to pop a tray under there just to catch any oil that drips. It shouldn't do in theory because there is a drain back valve in there. So let's have a go. Should we just turn this and off it comes. Okay, that's quite tight. We'll try a breaker bar this time. 
see what we get. Second attempt. Okay, we might have a problem on our hands here. There is a risk of actually shattering the housing if you're not careful. Right, we're going for everything now with a 60 centimeter breaker bar. So in theory, this should do it. That's pretty tight. I actually don't want to break my fake on tool there because they're quite expensive. So I think what I might do is just go on to a standard impact 36 mil just to see if I can break this loose without breaking any of my tools. Like I said, there is a risk of shattering the housing, so you do want to be careful. Oh, there we go. That was quite some pressure there. A little bit of like aluminium oxide dust blew off then. But at least it's loose and it hasn't shattered. So hopefully next time we won't have that problem. So we can go back to our normal fake on one. And just finish undoing it. Now if you undo it slowly, you should, there is a drain back valve inside which should allow the oil to flow back into the sump. So I'll give it a little while there. I've undone it a bit. Not sure if I've undone it enough. Now you do want to cover the alternator because you don't want oil to accidentally spill on the alternator or the drive belts. So it is worth covering that with a towel. Now hopefully the oil will have drained back and well that doesn't look so promising. Give it another go. There is oil coming out of that. I was hoping no oil would come out. I don't think it's full. I think some of it's drained back. Perhaps it's because I've jacked the front of the car up so high that it's not able to drain all the way back in. But anyway, so there's our filter in its canister. And this is the later type housing. There was an earlier version which might be worth actually mentioning just in case you've got the earlier version. So the oil still dripping there. I'm just going to put a brush in there and just sweep some of that oil out because I do want to inspect the drain back valve before putting the new filter in. Right then, so let's drain the engine oil now while we're at it. The quick heads up photo showing the sump and the 13mm sump plug that we obviously need to undo. So this should be pretty simple, can't see any problems happening here. It's quite straightforward and easily accessible. There we are. Still quite tight. This car might have had a couple of neglected oil changes I think. There we go, and then we'd gradually just pull that out gently because we obviously don't want the oil to shoot off under the car and all over the ground. So just do it nice and gentle. The oil is hot, so it is flowing out quite nicely, which is the reason for warming up the engine. So we'll leave that to drain a bit now. You want to give that a good while because you want all the oil to actually drain out. Now what I will do is actually run this through a sieve. Because the car is new to me and I don't know what its history is like, I just want to see if there's any metal particles. So we should get about four and a half litres. We're half a litre short. We've only got four litres. But more importantly, I just want to see if there's any specks of bronze or metal that could tell me that there's some possible issues inside the engine and thankfully it all looks quite clear a couple of little specks but nothing too bad so we've put the old oil now into a big container and that's for the local recycling obviously you must always take used oil to local recycling and i'm just going to put the plug back in now and tighten that to 25 newton meters and then i can focus back on the oil filter so you could change the plug and put a new one on or a new seal. I'm just going to give that a quick clean 
they normally don't leak but um, putting a new one on is always um, the ideal solution just in case right so that's all done now so I think it's worth making a brief note on the pre life cycle impulse filters and the housing differences so what I've done here is a quick drawing on a whiteboard and this is how they were they had a spring and a plastic guide sleeve in because the original filters were all paper now what would happen is that sleeve would often get thrown out with the old filter and then just put back in and it would collapse under pressure and you'd end up with no oil pressure and damage to the engine so BMW changed the filter and the new ones have like a plastic cage inside instead so it's just worth noting those differences and here for example is a Crossland filter and if we have a look inside you can just see the plastic cage in there the black cage and those are the rings on the end and if I shine a torch inside you should be able to see the plastic cage a little bit clearer there it is nice and clear now BMW did say that the new filter type would require more force to fit into the W10 engines as the internal diameter is narrower and slightly higher and then just to add to the confusion this filter I'll be using which is the later type appears to have no cage in at all so whether this is just made stronger I'm unsure but it definitely states all the minis I've owned so presumably it should be fine and shouldn't collapse but anyway right back to cleaning and fitting my oil filter with the later more common housing so here's a quick photo of that canister this is the new type and note the position of the rubber seal now also looking at the base of the oil filter on the engine you do want to make sure that the drain back valve is intact and not damaged as that can actually cause low oil pressure so just make sure everything's okay in there and there's no broken parts okay then so we remove the old filter uh, which ironically you can actually see that has the cage inside just checking there for that cage I think all the old filters are probably completely gone now so all modern filters should be suitable I would have presumed so what I'll do is clean this housing and I'd use a bit of paraffin for that obviously petrol would be a little bit a bit strong on there and obviously quite dangerous so paraffin is normally quite a gentle clean cleaner without too much of a explosion risk so give that a good clean and then what we need to do is obviously change that rubber seal as well we must never forget to change that seal I'll get all that nicely cleaned up so the paraffin's mostly gone so then just using a pick we can carefully pick that seal away the old one like so put that to one side make sure you don't accidentally put it back on again give the groove a nice clean and then we can have a look at the new filter so like I say this is the only one I could get at the time so it wasn't a filter of particular choice um, I think the MAN ones might be slightly better quality but like I said they only had one locally so it had to be this be this one so, anyway, so I've put a bit of oil on there just to help it go into the canister housing like that push it in and then you want to put a bit of oil on that seal just to help that go over make sure you definitely get it in seated into the correct position and give it a little bit more oil there because they are quite hard to actually fit they do require a little bit of pushing so I've got a bit of oil on the end there as well just to help it slide back on so I'll get my torque wrench and set that to 25 Newton meters now I will give the bottom of the housing a quick wipe out as well 
I have checked to make sure there's no bits of broken plastic in there or anything from the valves. Again, I'm just going to put another little bit of oil on there to help it go on. Hopefully this one won't get stuck and lock on like it did before. That could have been quite catastrophic, that. Okay, so then we can just... So it does require some force, but you don't want to cross-thread it. So I am sort of spinning it backwards and forwards just to ensure I'm not cross-threading it because it is quite a tight fit. So it almost can feel like you've cross-threaded it. So just make sure you haven't. So we can go back to the Facom low profile now, thankfully. And then just wind that into position. That's going on nicely. Like so. I'm just checking that there's no gap anywhere. And that it is definitely all the way on. And then we just torque that to 25 newton meters which ironically is the same setting for the sump plug. And as you see, that's not very tight at all. There we go, job's done. So now to refilling the engine oil, which requires four and a half litres. So since my container is five litres, theory has it, if, if I take half a litre out, then I should be able to safely just empty the whole container in and it shouldn't overfill it. Just make life a little bit easier. So you probably do want a funnel here. And again, as a precaution, it's worth covering the alternator and those drive belts from any spilt oil. And if you hold the container sideways, the oil does tend to flow easier um, without getting any air locks. So there we go, in it goes, four and a half litres, like so. And then what I will do is I'll take the car for a drive as well, just to distribute this oil. So we put the cap back on. Again, I was checking I hadn't cross-threaded it. And there we go, it clicks away. Remove our towel. And obviously we can put the half a litre back into the container and use that for topping up if required. So what we need to do now is just turn the engine over and make sure the oil pressure light goes out. It's going to be staying on for a little bit until that oil filter fills up. So there's the oil can symbol, the bottom right. There it is. So we're waiting for that light to go out. And there it is, so the oil filter should be full now and we've got oil pressure. So that seems to be okay. And like I said, I will take it for a spin now just to make sure the oil has all been distributed around the engine fully before I do the final um, dipstick check. So we get it out there. Just take her for a spin up the road. Everything seems to be alright, just keeping an eye on that oil pressure light, make sure it doesn't come on at all. And that everything seems to be alright. So then we just park up, leave it for 10 minutes for everything to drain back down. So now we've got the final oil level check and top up. So here's a photo of the dipstick. So it's about one litre between minimum and maximum. So just withdraw the dipstick, give it a quick wipe over. You've always got to wipe it first. Pop it back in. And let's see what reading we get. So it's just, it's in the hatched area. We're a little bit off max. So I think if I put it in quarter of a litre, that shouldn't overfill it and hopefully might just bring it up to the maximum there. So we get our oil, there we go, that's a quarter of a litre. 
pop that in. Again, I'm going to have to leave it just to settle a bit for it to go fully back down into the sump. Now we've got to do the same process again. Wipe the dipstick and then read the level and we're bang on maximum. There we go, so that's all done. So what we need to do now is obviously reset the service counter is the next job. So checking everything's all right, make sure that's shut. There we go, so let's go inside the car now and record the mileage and reset the service interval counter. So if I just turn the ignition to position one, we can see that the oil service was actually overdue. by 675 miles so obviously we need to reset that now there's our mileage so put your finger on the button hold it there turn the key to position one until test comes up and then we get 51a in the display press and hold again until we get rst there it is and then let go and press again to reset it. So now the interval is 15,500 miles till the next oil service. Obviously you just check that again, make sure, yeah, 15,500. And also note your mileage, which here is 151,000 miles for the service record. So what I'm also gonna do is just inspect the old oil filter. So I'm just gonna, because this is a new car to me, I would like to know if this filter holds any secrets. I'll use a pair of tin snips here and just snip around it. This will also show you the internal cage that these later filters have. Right, so that should just break off now, like so. Then we do the same on the other end. So all the pleats are starting to come apart and there's the internal cage like I said that cage isn't actually or doesn't appear to be visible on the filters I've used not sure why I say perhaps they use more pleats okay so looking at the inside of the filter which is obviously should be the clean side it gives us a comparison and then if we go back to the outside that does all the work, we can see carbon deposits. It does seem to be dry, sort of hard carbon deposits there. Can't really see any metal particles, which is good news. There's not a load of bronze um, parts flickering away, which is always the worry. So it's looking like things might be actually okay with this engine. When I did the timing chain, it was all nice and clean. The filter's looking okay. So hopefully this car now should have a long life on the road. Okay then, just to finish off, here's some reference photographs, which you can pause for longer. So I'll just show the details on the oil that I used. It's no particular brand. Um, again, it was just what was available at the time. But the point to note is that it's the C3 marking there and that it's BMW LL04 rated. And here again is that photo showing the parts for the oil change, the sump plug, and there's the sump, and then the oil filter there tucked away that we can see from the wheel arch, like so. You obviously see the drive belt there as well. And there it is at the back of the engine. And this is the canister, the later one. And there's that rubber seal and the visible rings on the end. And this is the filter I used, which like I said, doesn't seem to have any internal cage. So hopefully they know what they're doing and perhaps it's just got extra strength inside in a different way. 
And then finally a photo showing the dipstick with the minimum and maximum marks. Now just before ending the video, I would like to give my thanks to Oliver Tanner that gave me a rather generous donation saying that my videos helped him replace the clutch in his Mini, which is great news. That's what the videos are there for, hopefully to help people mend their cars and keep themselves motoring. So thank you for that, Oliver. All donations do help because there are costs involved in the channel and every little bit does help. So really appreciate that. And thank you everyone for supporting my channel by watching. And I appreciate that as well. And hopefully everyone have a good weekend and thank you. So you've been watching Oil and Filter Service on a Mini R57. And thank you for watching and I hope this video helps you service your Mini and reset the service counter. This video was filmed and edited by me, Mark Savage, in December 2021. And I can be found on Instagram and Facebook as Coats and Gators.